and we're going to talk about torch safety now. And what I'm going to, everybody, before you even use a torch, you've got to know what the ins and outs, what the safety, what the dangers are, and that kind of thing. And this is what we're going to work on today. Now, I will also say that if you're working under a car with a torch before you even start, uh, the gloves are okay, you know, they work pretty good. But if you don't have your arms covered up, then you can have sparks to fall down in here. So you basically need a long sleeve cotton shirt. It's kind of thick and I've got one that I have over there with the welding machine. And so you put that long sleeve shirt on and then you put your gloves on. One time I was working without gloves and I had on the long sleeve cotton shirt and I was burning an exhaust bolt off and there was a piece of red hot metal that went down in my sleeve. Or I might have gone on here with my watch hand or something. If I had the gloves on that wouldn't have happened. So basically what you got to do is just, you know, stay calm and everything. Now, this little set of goggles here has got a prescription level number six for the keeping your rays out. Not like welding goggles, they're not quite as dark. The welding is like a 10 or maybe a 12. Okay, you put the gloves on up there like that. Now, what this is is a regulator. This gauge right here tells you how much is in the tells you how much is in the bottle. How much is in the bottle. So when you open this up, you're going to see that gauge go up to how much is in the bottle, right? Okay, so the amount that's in the bottle is going to be about 600 pounds. You can have a couple thousand pounds in there. This is a seamless strong steel bottle. And I heard one time about one that fell off a truck and knocked this off and went three miles and knocked the side out of a barn. This thing is, weighs about 140 pounds. You got 2,000 pounds of thrust, it becomes a rocket. So be really, really careful. That's why these are chained up so they're not going to fall over. All right, now remember, this is a regulator. The way a regulator works, when you turn that in, it actually raises the pressure available to the hose. So turning that in does not turn the gas off. It raises the pressure going to the hose. Now, the welding instructor at one of the departments over here was telling me that what always bothered him was that some of the guys would think they were turning this off and they would just crank this all the way in and it would puncture the diaphragm in there and then they would say oops when they heard that happen and then they would open this back up say they have the gas off they turn that and they wouldn't tell anybody about it and then whenever somebody else came to turn it on what would happen is that all of this 2,000 pounds of gas pressure on a full bottle would come screaming in behind this rip this brass threads out of here, this comes out and goes across the shop like a bullet, hits the wall somewhere. The problem with that is if you don't know that has happened and you're standing right here and you open that and that thing's looking you straight in the face, where's it going? In your face. It's going to go into your chest, into your throat, into your teeth, into your head, and it's not going to be pretty. So anytime you're ever turning on a torch, get to the side, turn the torch onto the side, and make sure you're wearing your personal protective equipment. Secondly, uh, you might notice these gauges say use no oil. The reason they say use no oil is if I was to loosen this up a little bit and squirt some oil up in there and then crack this on a fresh oxygen bottle, it would be like Hiroshima. We're talking nuclear. You know what I mean? So stay the heck away from here with oil. Don't ever put any oil anywhere on torch. The gauges say use no oil on both of these. When you put oil and gas under pressure, you're asking for an explosion, and it's going to be a big one if you've got a fully charged oxygen bottle. This is your acetylene, uh, which is basically going to be your flammable gas. This is pure oxygen. It's under pressure. Neither one of these is basically going to be uh, a liquefied thing, although there is some funky stuff that goes on in the acetylene cylinder and all that. So one way or another, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to do like it. I've already got safety glasses on my face. But I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put this on like that. See, you can still see out of this, but that flipped up. It's not like you got it down like this and can't see it. All right, so you get right here and make sure that that's not clear or nothing. Now watch it. Now get close enough, zoom in enough to where you can get these gauges right here whenever I turn this on. Can you see them? I'm going to walk up. Okay. That'll be good enough. Okay? Right there. All right. And we gotta, we're making sure that's not pointed at her. All right, now watch this. We're going to crack that open. You notice there's only about 600 pounds left in this bottle. We're going to have to get another one before very long. Now, most of your welders will open this up all the way. And just for our purposes, I'm going to open it up just enough. Now, watch what happens when I turn this. Watch this gauge right here. When I turn that regulator, I turn the regulator, 
it goes up. I'm gonna put it up on about 20 psi. You know, this sort of a, if you're burning with a with a burning torch, you go up to about 40. You know, for welding, which is what we we ordinarily do with this kind of tip here, we'll go up to about 20 psi. So I got my oxygen regulated. I got 20 pounds of pressure on this hose. Now down here, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to lay that down for now. And I'm going to stand to the side on this one because, it, like I say, it doesn't have as much pressure, even fully charged as the oxygen bottle does. And I'm going to turn that up. All right. See, I'm going to do a quarter of a turn on that. The reason we do a quarter of a turn on that is because if, for example, you happen to uh, if something falls on your hose and it starts a fire and you need to get your flammable gas turned off really quickly, you want to be able to do this. You don't want to have to go over here and be doing this, trying to turn it off while these things about to blow up. All right, so right here, what we're doing, after I've opened that one up, and uh, stay out of the camera if you don't want to wear safety glasses, okay? All right, now, right over here, six pounds of pressure. See how dialed that up. All right. I've got my pressure on my hose at right. You got a red hose, you got a green hose. Incidentally, the one with the notches around it's got left hand thread. This one here, and the, and a flammable gas will typically have left hand thread here and here. Everywhere you're doing this, it's got left hand thread. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to open the, get your spark lighter ready, open the red one a little bit, and then light it. All right, what I'm going to do here, got to be careful where you're pointing your flame too, by the way. All right, you want that about like that. You don't want it like that. You don't want it like that. You want it about like that. See that? That's a nice little flame. Then you're going to go to your other knob and you're going to turn your oxygen on. Now, incidentally, this knob doesn't have left-hand thread, but the hose does. That's why I point that. All right, that is a carbonizing flame. That is an oxidizing flame. That is a neutral flame. That one right there is one. You can give it more gas and more oxygen if you need to to make the flame blow the hotter. When I turn it off, I do that. I turn that off. I lay that down there. I'm going to turn this one off first. And I'm going to turn that one off. Like I say, most of the time the welder will load this one all the way up. And I got that one like that. All right, then while I've still got that, not everybody does this, but there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to bleed these off until they're reading zero. You know, so there won't be any gas pressure on the hoses. And you'll watch them all bleed down like that. And, uh, that one there. Right there may need to be recalibrated with a screwdriver. So. Now after I've done that, I close those valves back off on the torch. Don't leave them open. And then I'm going to dial these back out. All right. And that way, we're back where we need to be. Okay. Always wear your personal protective equipment. Put you some eye protection on. Don't take this lightly. And whenever you're doing brazing or cutting or anything, you really ought to have this flipped down, you know, so it kind of filters in there. Now, I will tell you this. You can look straight at the red-hot metal through the clear lens, and it won't typically damage your eyes like an electric arc would. You know what I mean? But it's still, you can see better what you're doing if you put this number six lens down and you're watching whatever you're doing your brazing and everything. Something else I also like to say, too, if you're building a tool, like if you're having to braze a, one socket together with another one to build some kind of a tool, I don't, brazing works better than welding for that. Because the welding tends to crystallize the metal, make it brittle. Brazing will pit, I mean, I've made a lot of tools, and any time I braze one, it lasts forever, but if I weld one with a welding machine or something, it basically gets the metal too hot and it makes it brittle and weak. So that concludes this presentation.